Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova. It's amazing to be here with all of you tonight. Um, I hope that many of you enjoy the delicious family dinner that we had outside um, on our patio, deliciously prepared by Miriam Cosberg and her team of assistants, Yashra Kalach, and thank you. So delicious. And so because this is an evening that for me feels like a family dinner, I wanted to share some words of Torah as if we were sitting at the dinner table together. Um, and if you have been in this congregation for a while, you might have heard me teach before. If you've been around a lot in the past couple of months, you've definitely heard me teach. And I'd love to do some teaching tonight so we can all learn together. Usually we pass out a piece of paper at this point, but this, uh, but this night, please turn to page 14 in your Mahsurim. Now, the first thing about this machzor that you probably noticed and is a little bit unusual is that the, both the left and the right-hand pages have the same number. So if you find yourself a little bit confused trying to find page 14, I do not think you are alone. I was like, where is it right now? But this is another, so study is an opportunity to get familiar and comfortable with the words in front of us. And so there's a particular paragraph on this page that has stuck out to me for a number of years. Actually, since the first year, I started learning how to lead high holiday services. Um, and so I wanted to look at it. This is the last paragraph on page 14. Um, and there, this paragraph appears through, throughout Rosh Hashanah, um, throughout Yom Tov, also on Rosh Chodesh. So we'll learn it tonight in the context of Rosh Hashanah, but once, you, once we learn it together tonight, this is something that you can take with you throughout the year, which I think is amazing. So if we look, um, we have our, our Hebrew um, on the right side, we have our English on the left side, and then we have the two columns on the outside of our commentary. So we're going to read the far right commentary, the last one that says, may the thought of us rise up and reach you. We all sort of there? Okay, good. So this, those are the first two Hebrew words in the paragraph. This paragraph asks God to keep certain things in mind, naming objects of remembrance that move from the present, us, to the past, our ancestors, and then to future hope, the redemption of the people of Israel. It is recited on every festival and new moon, though some scholars think that it was originally composed for the Rosh Hashanah liturgy since it emphasizes remembrance, because the traditional name for Rosh Hashanah is the Day of Remembrance. Okay, so that's, our, that's a great commentary. I hope you noticed not only that the page 14 is the same number on the left and the right side, which is unusual, but we have a lot of really wonderful and interesting commentary in this Moxor that I encourage you to explore throughout the holiday season. Okay, so now we're going to go to the left side of the page, the last paragraph that starts, Our God and God of Our Ancestors. We there? Okay. Our God and God of Our Ancestors, may the thought of us rise up and reach you. Attend to us and accept us, hear us and respond to us. Keep us in mind and keep in mind the thought of our ancestors as well as the Messiah, the descendant of David, Jerusalem, your holy city, and all your people, the house of Israel. On this day of remembrance, respond to us with deliverance, goodness, compassion, love, life, and peace. Remember us for good, respond to us with blessing, redeem us with life. Show us compassion and care with words of salvation and kindness, have mercy on us, and redeem us. Our eyes are turned to you, for you are a compassionate and loving sovereign. Okay, so this Rosh Hashanah is our day of remembrance. So obviously we're remembering. In this paragraph, we're asking God to remember several things. But the first thing I thought studying this this year is, what are, what are we remembering? Thankfully, the answer to that question is in the small paragraph right above. This is the, our day of remembrance. It's a, because it's Shabbat, it's a day for recalling the shofar sound with love. We don't sound the shofar on Shabbat, but we remember what the shofar sounds like on Shabbat. That's part of observing Rosh Hashanah on Shabbat. It's a day for holy assembly, like we're doing right now. Doesn't, you gotta remember to, to show up on time and know what day it is. There's not too much remembering, more assembling in that. And for recalling the exodus from Egypt. Okay, so we've gotta remember that tonight's the night to be in shul. We can do that. We also have to remember the sound of the shofar because it's Shabbat, and we have to remember the exodus from Egypt. We were enslaved, and God set us free so that we could be God's people. We have to remember that today. Okay, so what are the things now that we're asking God to remember? Okay, starting from the beginning of the paragraph, kind of going through, we're asking God to remember us. We're asking our God to remember our ancestors. 
We're asking God to remember the Messiah, the descendant of David, Jerusalem, our holy city, and all our people, the house of Israel. So, okay, this is a list of, of five things that are all pretty Jewish, but what's the common thread? I, I was studying this year, and this is what I saw. I, I think that this is asking us to remember our potential. We're remembering our potential, and we're asking God to remember our potential. So we're asking God to remember us. How many times have we gone up to someone that maybe we haven't seen in a while, they're kind of looking at us, and we're like, no, remember me? Like, hello, I, I exist, I'm here. So we're asking God to remember us. Then we're asking God to remember our ancestors. I think of my, my grandmother. I'm wearing my grandmother's ring tonight. My grandmother is such a special person to me. And, and thinking about my own parents who have recently become grandparents for the first time, and I'm thinking about how our ancestors for us are our role models. Parents, grandparents, teachers that we had when we were young. And there's something about remembering these people who, who helped us so much in our youth that it, it's like all of the bad parts, we, those kind of fade away over time. You know, not always everyone's experience varies, but when I'm hearing people talk about their grandparents, so many good things. And when I think about my grandparents and my grandmother, so many good things. So remembering our role models, the best of what we have to offer. Then we have Messiah. Definitely an interesting idea in Jewish tradition. It's about the potential of a perfected world and humans being a part of this perfected world. So God, please remember that we human beings who make mistakes sometime can help to make this world a better place and maybe even a perfect place. Now we have Jerusalem. It's a physical place. Isn't it a city like any other? Oh no, it is not. If you have been there, Jerusalem is an incredibly special place, a unique place, important to so many people. It's a physical place with spiritual uniqueness. And we want God to remember that a physical place can have spiritual uniqueness. And then we want God to remember all the Jewish people because we want to remember one another. We don't want anyone to be left out. Everyone is included. So we, as we begin this new year together and we ask God to remember our potential, I'm asking us to remember our own potential. We're reflecting on our errors at this time of year. That's what this time of year is for. But the point of reflecting on our errors is not to beat ourselves up, it's to move beyond them. It's to grow past them. It's to make different mistakes next year than we made in this past year. And remembering the exodus from Egypt, looking at that paragraph, this is a day when we have to remember the exodus from Egypt, we're not enslaved. Thank God we're not enslaved. We can be our full selves, we can do what God made us to do, and we have to remember that on this day. And then let's remember our collective potential as all God's people, the house of Israel. God freed us from slavery to journey towards the promised land. This is us realizing our potential as a diverse yet unified family and nation and taking on our responsibility to be a light unto the nations. Today, Rosh Hashanah helps us remember that this is what we are striving for. And we're remembering all this ourselves as we're asking God to remember these things. May this remembrance bring us a year of blessing, wellness, life, love, happiness, and success. Shana Tovah. <laughs>